Hi everyone, it's Robin Shea. This is day seven evening message of the 28 day experience from Before the Fork. And I'm so happy if you're, if you're out there tonight and you're here joining us. So today was another incredibly successful day. And as we talked this morning, I told you that I was going to bring to you some other types of meditation practices. So what we're gonna demonstrate for you tonight, and I have a little assistant over there that you're getting ready to meet in a minute named Mandy. Uh, but we're going to go into super brain yoga and this is an integrative yoga that unites the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere of the brain not only does it help you with cognitive hi peggy it helps you with um, your cognitive function but it also helps with balance so i do before i train anyone in the gym we do about three minutes of super brain yoga because it really does help blur that line between one foot going that way and one foot going that way and you're not quite having superior balance. So super brain yoga is fantastic for so many things, but what I wanna do first, before we get into the actual science of super brain yoga, I want to let Mandy demonstrate it for you. And I'm gonna kinda, of, hi Kim, hi everyone watching. I'm gonna kinda of go through exactly what I want y'all to do. So I'm gonna take the camera over here. There's our beautiful model. And Mandy, <laughs> hi ladies, and Mandy is also a yoga instructor. Hi Judy. So she's very in tune with the body. Um, obviously she's incredibly physically fit. And so what I'm gonna tell you to do first, and Mandy's just going to demonstrate it. I'm gonna hold this a little closer to my mouth so y'all can hear me. Is she, in the, is she in the camera? There you are, Mandy. Okay, so what Mandy's gonna first do is cross her left arm over her body, and she's gonna grab a pressure point by putting the, her thumb on the back of her earlobe. Okay, and you're just gonna have a nice gentle pressure to know that it's there, and that is activating that pressure point. So the left hand goes closest to your chest. The next thing she's going to do is join her right hand to her left earlobe, doing the same thing. The thumb goes behind the ear in the pressure point. Now, you're not going for a deep squat, are you still in the camera? There you are. You're not going for a deep squat. You're simply going for a comfortable squat. So when I am doing this, what I focus on is the first couple of repetitions that I do. I set a timer for three minutes. And the first couple of repetitions, I have my eyes open. That's perfect. You're not going for a deep knee bend. You're just going for a nice rhythm. Uh, and after about the third or fourth um, dissension when I come back up I go ahead and close my eyes and I integrate a little bit more balance work into the super brain yoga okay so she's doing perfect that's exactly what you're doing now you're going to inhale on the dissension and you're going to exhale when you ascend when you when you stand back up so inhale down exhale as you come up now that's perfect, Mandy, thank you. So y'all see, it's incredibly simple. It's not a strenuous practice. It's nothing that you're gonna work up a major sweat on. Thank you, Mandy. Thank you. Um, but it is so great in integrating the left and the right hemispheres of the brain, improving cognitive function. I have a website pulled up because I just wanted to go into a couple of the other details about super brain yoga with you. Um, for young children, especially children with ADD, and just attention disorders that, uh, and they don't have to have clinical ADD. Uh, some children just have a lot of extra energy. Super brain yoga is a fantastic exercise to do with your child. Um, not only is it proven to improve their cognitive function, but because you're calming the prefrontal cortex, oxygenating the prefrontal cortex through your deep breathing. Remember, we're going to breathe in as we squat down. We're going to exhale as we stand back up. And through that oxygenation process, you're actually calming the neurons and everything in the forefront of the brain. And that is going to, it's been shown, it's been proven to increase a child's ability to focus in school from 25 to 35 percent. So this is a huge, huge step and tool for any parent that is trying to harness their child and, and have, help them wrap their mind around a classroom setting where they're having to pay attention. Now, if y'all remember, um, Rylan, my number three, this is, attention was absolutely something that he struggled with. So anything that I came across that would help with his attention, I latched onto and I read as much as I could. So I do have an article pulled up here. And the science behind super brain yoga 
is without a shadow of, the do of a doubt some of the strongest science that I've seen as far as uh, your prefrontal cortex and your hind brain uniting as well as the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere coming together and joining and working as one unit. Uh, again, not a long practice. This is a three minute practice. Don't expect to see immediate results. Uh, you do have to factor in some patience into the equation, but after about three months, you should start seeing significant improvements, not only in your balance, but in your cognitive skills as well. You can, uh, your meditations, your breathing, breath meditations that we went over this morning, those will become um, a, more enjoyable for you. Anytime that you are harnessing that forebrain and calming it down, and, or I'm sorry, harnessing the hindbrain and, and implementing the forebrain breathing, and calming that beast down, then you're actually training it to just go longer and longer and longer. Super Brain Yoga, uh, it's such a valuable tool. So I hope that y'all will look into it. I'm gonna share a link um, with a little video on Super Brain Yoga so you can actually see a little bit more of an in-depth demonstration of the practice. Uh, like I said, I do it whenever I'm training anyone. We do three minutes of Super Brain Yoga prior to getting into our actual lifting session. So that's how valuable I feel it is. I've been doing it for about five years since I stumbled across it. And um, I'm, I'm very, very pleased with the results. It's not supposed to stress you physically. You're not going for a deep, deep, deep squat. You're simply integrating left hand to the chest, uh, uh, thumb behind the earlobe, right hand over the left arm, thumb behind the earlobe. Start with your eyes opened a couple of, of bends and then close your eyes so you're integrating a little bit more balance. It also helps if you tune into a little sound like we talked about this morning. That's kind of a, a, a harmless sound but a constant sound and just focus on it. Set your timer for three minutes and you are good to go. So I hope everyone had a fantastic day today. Um, I had an awesome day. Um, spent a lot of the day on the boat and I'll tell you what what I realized is I did make a huge banana pudding today because my son Colton loves banana pudding and he brought his family out for the day so I made Colton a big banana pudding and rather than grazing I took every opportunity I had to go out on the boat with my husband and the kids to kind of pull me away from the kitchen so I wasn't tempted by all the goodies and that seemed to really help keep me on track so we've already eaten dinner so I've you know, kind of wrapped it up. We're gonna go put a movie on here soon. Uh, this is, I think, our last night at the lake. We'll be heading home tomorrow afternoon, but I'll be back with you in the morning for day eight morning message. Now is about time for y'all to start sharing with me uh, and on the page some of the things that you're realizing through phase two. Uh, we are day four of phase two. So you should start having some phase two moments and recognizing those as phase two moments. Uh, and I would love for you to share those, whether it was a stumble, whether it was a, a misstep, or, or to share with us the celebrations from identifying your happiness work. And when you chose to elevate the emotion over being mired down in the negative emotion, share those. Uh, help people understand that you can start to frame your life in such a way that you feel yourself letting go of resentment and frustration and aggravation and you're choosing you're constantly choosing or consciously choosing rather a higher emotion to step into so please share your experiences I invite all of you ask questions share your experiences we're deep enough into the 28 day experience uh, that you should be having things come up if you find a tip tool or technique that has worked for you please share it on the page and I will go back and I will take all of those tips, tools, and techniques and I will put them on a little spreadsheet and share them on the page in addition to the tips, tools, and techniques that I have on the on, inside the book already. Uh, so you have a, a really quick reference guide to go to. So it's time. Start sharing your stories. We're all here for each other. We are your support system. So uh, use us as such. That's what I want this page to be for everyone. So I love you all. Thank you for joining me tonight. Uh, knock it out of the park the rest of the night. Always remember that your evening hours can be your absolute most challenging. 
So uh, stay ahead of yourself, stay ahead of, of uh, what you could be moving into since it is the last couple of hours before everyone calls it a night. And um, just stay on top of it. And then tonight, when you go to your bed, sit that suitcase down that you've been gathering all your indiscretions in, bless it, and leave it at the foot of your bed, never to be picked up again. I love you all very much, and I will talk to you first thing in the morning. Bye.